This mini PC has a super fast AMD Ryzen 7 eight core processor, two and a half gig ethernet. There's dual USB 4, 40 gigabit per second ports. You get fast memory, a PCIe Gen 4 SSD. I mean, there's a ton to like in this system, but it's a competitive market. So let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH and this is a B-Link SCR7. That means that this has the AMD Ryzen 7 7840HS processor, eight core, 16 threads. And that makes it similar to the B-Link GTR7 that we reviewed previously. Now you might be wondering what's the difference then between the GTR7 and the SCR7? And the answer is that this is like a cost optimized and smaller footprint version of the GTR7. Now, as we're recording this, we're still in that kind of like early days of pricing, but just kind of based on the website pricing that I'm looking at right now, as I'm doing this video, this should be about a hundred dollars less, maybe $80 less than the GTR7. Now there are some feature differences that we're going to talk about in this review, but I think the idea is that like, if you want the mini PC experience with the AMD Ryzen processor, but you don't necessarily want the full like fancy version with like the fingerprint reader and all that kind of stuff, this is B-Link's option. That's a little bit lower cost. And as always with all of these videos, I like to say thank you to all of our STH YouTube members who have joined down below and support the channel. So we can go and buy systems to go and compare this to. Guys, this is gonna be a super fun one. So let's get to the hardware. Okay, the first thing in terms of hardware is let's just talk about the size of the system. So uh, I have right here the SER6, which is the previous gen. We have a video on this one that we'll link in the description. Now these things are about the same footprint, but you're gonna notice that like the GTR7, when we went GTR6 to GTR7, the SER6 is a lot smaller, or at least uh, shorter than the SER7. And comparing that to something like the Minis Forum UM790 Pro, which is a similar form factor, you're gonna see that the Minis Forum is definitely a little bit larger of a footprint, but it's not really that much bigger. It's also just slightly taller than the B-Link unit. So I guess the Minis Forum UM790 Pro is a little bit bigger, but I wouldn't let that deter you. Like, you know, I don't really think that there are that many people that are gonna say like, oh, I can't fit the Minis Forum, so the B-Link is the right answer. I think you're gonna more look at this in terms of price and features. The other ones I wanna compare this to are the B-Link GTR7, which is on the bottom, and GTR R7 Pro, which is on top. The big difference here is the Ryzen 7 versus the Ryzen 9 processor. And so if you look at the size of these, this is a little bit shorter in terms of the overall depth of the unit. But then when you go and you put it like kind of on top of the unit, you can definitely see just the fact that, uh, hopefully you guys can see this over here, but it is definitely a lot smaller than the GTR7. And just looking around the units, you can tell that there's some things that are inspired by the GTR7, but also some things that are, uh, you know, definitely a little bit different. Like for example, you're gonna see that the top looks a lot more like the GTR7. So this takes really B-Link's new design language and puts that into the SCR7 family. And although they use the same processor, you can tell that this is slightly cut down in terms of a system because things like you don't get the fingerprint reader that you get on the GTR7. Also just like little things, like it doesn't say GTR SCR on this one, right? So just little things, but like I can feel these in my hand and I can tell you the GTR7 is much heavier. But I think if you're okay with the feature differences, the SCR7 might actually make more sense in the fancier units. Okay, now looking at the front of the unit, you're gonna see that we get a power button, of course, and then something that I like about this unit that I don't like about the GTR7, and I think a lot of people have commented on, is the fact that the clear CMOS button is still present, but it's like a recess button that you'd have to get like a pin to actually go and push, versus having a giant button on the GTR7. Guys, this is a huge upgrade in functionality just by not having that like super super easy to like mistakenly hit clear CMOS button that you see on the GTR7 and GTR7 Pro. Other big features though is like the SCR6, you get a headset jack, you also get a type A port. And then on this one, you get a type C port. Now, the big difference between the SCR6 and SCR7 is that you don't get dual type A ports like you got on the SCR6, which I think is just kind of a bummer. I like to have a lot of ports to go plug things into. And the fact that you lose a port from the front is definitely, you know, definitely a bummer. And let me show you another reason that's a bummer is because when we look at the back of the unit, you're gonna see that we get two USB ports and these are type A ports, but these are only USB two ports. I mean, I totally get cost optimization, but getting one USB three port on the front and then getting two USB type, like two ports on the back, like where the heck are the rest of the USB type A ports? I, I have no idea. And that is probably one of my biggest complaints about the system. You need more USB three type A ports. This just doesn't have enough, but there are two more USB type C ports on the back, but these are not just normal USB, like three type C ports. Instead, these are USB four ports. That means that you get a couple of features. One, these can function as display output. So they have display port alt mode. Two, you can of course use them as 40 gigabit per second USB four. Three, you can use these as 
Thunderbolt 3 port. And we've tested this with both the eGPU chassis, as well as things like the 10 gigabit adapters that are Thunderbolt 3 adapters, and it works with these ports. So you can get things like 10 gigabit per second. I know a lot of people are like, it needs 10 gigabit ethernet. Cool, but you can just go get an external card and go do that. That is super awesome. But we're on the subject of networking, and I figure, well, why don't we talk about the networking that's on board this next? So on the wired side, we get an Intel i225V 2.5 gig Ethernet port. It's a little bit strange that in 2023, especially the second half of 2023, a new system is still using the i225, not the newer i226V, but at least this is a 2.5 gig Ethernet solution, which is not too bad. And when we get inside the system, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the networking bits that seem a little bit older in the system as well. Now, in terms of the display outputs, this is something that is definitely very different, right? So on the SCR6, we got two HDMI ports, and that was really useful if you had to go like hook this up to a TV or something like that. But this has a display port as well as an HDMI port. If you're hooking up to a monitor, most likely you're going to be using DisplayPort, but if you're hooking up to a TV, you're going to be using HDMI. And of course, you can get converter dongles, but just remember with the two USB 4 ports, you get a total of four display outputs with the system, which is actually quite a bit for a little system like this. I mean, this is tiny. And just rounding out something that we also saw on the GTR 7, we also get an audio jack on the back. Now, one feature that I'm not crazy about that is carried over from the GTR 7 series is you're going to see that we have the same little power adapter. So we have our 100 watt power brick here and uh, we have the magnetic little power thing. And I'm just gonna show you real quick the reason I'm not a huge fan of this, right? So if you have this magnetically attached, unlike something like an Apple power connector where you just kind of like pull it out and like your laptop doesn't fall on the ground, this, you can definitely just go and pull this thing around. And so your magnetic adapter really doesn't get you anything. Instead, it's just a proprietary magnetic adapter that like if you ever were to lose this adapter or to die or something like that, like how do you get a replacement? This is just have a normal DC power input. I think this is a huge miss from the B-Link folks. And in both the GTR 7 as well as the GTR 7 Pro reviews, this was one of the biggest areas that you guys gave your feedback and said the same thing. This is kind of cool, but it's not necessarily something that I think folks want or need a proprietary power adapter. And that gets us to the bottom of the system. You're gonna see that we have our giant B-Link feet and you're gonna see the holes for the Phillips head screws are just kind of in there. So they're actually pretty easy to access. It's something that we saw on previous generations, we see on the current generation GTR 7. But if you were to go to the minis forum, for example, well, you have to go peel off the feet and then undo the screws and then put whatever, whatever you're gonna service in. I think to re-stick the feet on and hope that they stay. I just, I think this is a much cleaner little solution and you still get little tiny features like the pull tab for the bottom cover. Now on the system, the AMD Ryzen 7 branding has moved to the bottom of the system and you still get the like how to enter BIOS and all that kind of stuff. But the one thing that you don't get on this and it's kind of similar to the GTR 7 is you don't get a perforated bottom of this. And that also kind of feels a little bit like a miss. Something that B-Link did and for both the GTR 6 as well as GTR 7 is they introduced a fan cover that or cover that had a hole for the fan that's on the bottom of the system to improve cooling. And since that's something that on the GTR 7 7 Pro, they said, hey, this is something that, you know, we should have maybe done. And so we're going to give these as free upgrades for users. You might say like, well, since the SCR 7 came later, they already incorporated that, right? And the answer is no, this, this still has a solid bottom. Bottom. And that's super important for when we get inside the system. So let's get to that now. Okay, now getting inside the system is super easy. There are four screw holes and then you can pull your little pull tab and now the cover comes off. And once you do that, you're gonna notice some things that are different immediately. And one of the big ones is the fact that you have this little thermal pad here, which ties to the fact that there is a spot for a second M.2 slot. So I guess if you wanted to add a second M.2 drive, it's super easy to do in the system. Now B-Link also says that you can put a two and a half inch drive and like swap this out for like SATA or something like that. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, you start like actually covering this fan, which it says not to block the fan. So I don't know why you'd really want to put a drive there. Maybe I, I just don't know the answer. And not only that, like if you want to talk about blocking the fan in the first place, I mean, like putting the cover on, well, that's gonna block the fan. So your only airflow sources are really from like the sides of the chassis, which is not really ideal. Still having the fan is definitely better than not having a fan because it keeps our SSD as well as our memory cool. Now to get under the shroud, there are three screws and it's a little bit painful because two of the screws are recessed to the point that like, you know, if you have a big screwdriver, they're not gonna fit. Now the first feature when you get inside is you're gonna see that there are two SODIM slots. These are DDR5 5600 SODIMs from Crucial, and there's 32 gigabytes of memory, which means that we get two 16 gigabyte SODIMs. 
Now on the SSD side, we get a crucial SSD and this thing is uh, is decently fast. It's not the fastest by any means PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD, but it's also only one terabyte. Now I know for a lot of folks, one terabyte's a lot, but these days a SSD like this on Amazon is gonna cost you maybe like 45 bucks and going up to that two terabyte version of this would cost you something like, you know, maybe 80 bucks or something like that, $79 for the larger version. So I get on one hand trying to keep the cost down since this is like the cost reduced version of the GTR7, but on the other hand, I just kind of feel like two terabyte drives right now are like where it's at. Now, unlike the GTR7, you get one M.2 slot on this bottom area underneath the fan, and then you get the second M.2, which is in that spot that we showed you earlier on top of the fan trap. And then that brings us to the Wi-Fi NIC. Now, the Wi-Fi NIC is actually a decent one because it's an Intel AX200. That Intel AX200 is a Wi-Fi 6 NIC and also has Bluetooth and all that kind of stuff, but it's also an older version. What you would use nowadays is most likely an Intel AX210, which is the Wi-Fi 6E version of that. Now I get that this is a cost reduced version, but it's really not that much more expensive to get the Wi-Fi 6E version. Usually it's maybe a dollar, two dollars, something like that more. And so I do wish that B-Link just said, hey, we're going to give you Wi-Fi 6E because just to me, that's a nice little feature that really should be included in this. You can say that this is cost optimized, but still when you're talking about a system that's like $600 or more, I, I kind of feel like you should have Wi-Fi 6E in it. Okay, so next let's get to performance. Okay, now on the performance side, this processor is the AMD Ryzen 7 7840HS. It's an eight core, 16 thread processor, and frankly, it is darn fast. This is the same processor that you get in systems like the B-Link GTR7. And when we ran it through our benchmarks, we saw that there was some variation between the GTR7 as well as this one. But on balance, I would say that they're pretty similar in terms of performance. Maybe you're gonna lose a, like one, two, 3%, something like that, but there's not like a huge delta in terms of the performance of these two systems. But that's only telling like half the story because on the CPU side, we expect this AMD Ryzen 7 processor to be darn fast. On the other hand though, you can actually go do things like play esports titles at 4K resolution, high settings and stuff with the integrated graphics. We fired up League of Legends and of course we're getting awesome frame rates even at 4K. Now I know a lot of folks want us to go do like huge amounts of gaming benchmarks and it's just not what we do. But on the other hand, the esports titles are super popular there are tons of people play them and you don't need a discrete GPU to be able to go and crank settings using the AMD Radeon 780M graphics, which to me is just an awesome feature. And that of course brings us to power consumption and noise. And let's look at that next. Okay, let's take a look at the power consumption and noise of this thing, because that's a big deal with these mini PCs. So first off, this is actually idle right now at the Windows desktop, and I don't think you can hear it. I'll let you listen. And just to give you some idea, in our 34 dBA noise floor studio, this thing is running at just over 34, 35 maybe dBA. This is like super silent when you're here. Like I can't even really even hear it from this distance that it's not even arm's length away. Now at idle, the power consumption is generally in that like maybe six to nine, six to 10 watt range. And it kind of bounces around because it's a Windows desktop. Still, for a pretty fast eight core 16 thread processor, that is not too bad. Now, when we put a load on the system, you're gonna see the power consumption get up into like high 70 watt range. Now we've let this thing run for a little bit and something that you're gonna see here is the big difference between the SCR7 and the GTR7 is just the fact that this thing is getting darn hot and uh, the fan is not going crazy, which means that the from a noise perspective, you know, this thing is still pretty quiet, but we've now throttled down to only having 41 or so watts of power consumption all the way up from like 78 to 80 watts. So this thing has really cut its performance where the GTR7 just kind of sits there. So this thing is not making a lot of noise still, uh, but from a performance perspective, this does start to hurt performance, especially if you were to run this thing at 100% nonstop. But, uh, you know, in a lot of these shorter benchmarks that you run, you just don't kind of see this thing get heat soaked. Here's an example of what's happening now versus when we did the same thing on the GTR7, just so you can see kind of what happens a couple minutes after a 100% workload like this. So overall, some pretty interesting findings, but let's get to our key lessons learned that aren't just related to this power thing. 
Okay, now with all of these videos, I always like to have a key lessons learned section. I mean, we don't just have this system. We reviewed a ton of other mini PCs based on AMD Ryzen, based on Intel CPUs. We've done Nooks, we've done all kinds of different systems. So what did we learn from this? Well, I think there are a couple of things that stand out to me at least. And the first one is just the fact that I do like the fact that this is a much lower cost version of the GTR 7. Like honestly, if this came out, I probably would not have gotten the GTR 7 just because like, you know, I, I like the fingerprint print reader, but do I need it? And also like I need that second LAN sometimes, but sometimes I don't. And do I need a second SSD? Maybe, maybe not. The one thing I don't like that they cut is definitely the USB ports. Like this needs more USB ports. The other thing though that it needs is just more modern networking. I mean, you do get two and a half gig ethernet and you do get Wi-Fi 6 because those are features that you need on a PC these days, but you don't get Wi-Fi 6E, which is weird because we're about to transition to Wi-Fi 7 and you get the Intel i225V, not the Intel i226V. So I, to me, that just kind of feels like something that is an oversight that B-Link really should do and just across their portfolio. And that portfolio element brings me to my next point, which is, I firmly believe that B-Link needs to have bare bones versions of not just this, but also the GTR7, GTR7 Pro. Like, let's say you wanted to go put something like 64 gigabytes of memory, or maybe you just don't care about memory for some weird reason and you just want 16 gigabytes. Well, that would be an opportunity to go and put some different configuration. And if you have two DIMMs already in here, well, what, what do you do with them after you upgrade? And I'm saying that because I had two DDR5 4800 DIMMs like just sitting over here. And like, what am I gonna do with them now that we're using higher speed memory. Of course, at SDH, these will get used, don't worry. But there are also simple things like that one terabyte drive, you might want to be two terabytes or a four terabyte drive or something like that. And in a fixed configuration, you just can't change that. So to me, that's another bummer. The other thing I do like is the fact that they changed the clear CMOS, or at least it's the same as the SER6. I have no idea why they're so big on the GTR7. Another cost optimization that they should have taken though is not using this proprietary power adapter because I, I don't like it. I don't know many of our readers that like it. I just think this is something that just wasn't necessary. But overall, I do think if you can live with this port configuration, I think you're gonna be very happy with a little system like this, especially since it's a lower cost one than the GTR7. Now, of course, if you want two, two and a half gig ethernet ports, more USB, all that kind of stuff, fingerprint reader, then getting the GTR7, I think makes a lot more sense. But if you wanna save some dollars and uh, still get the same awesome CPU, same memory, same SSD, all that kind of stuff, well, th this is a pretty darn good option. Hey guys, I hope you like this look at the B-Link SER7. If you did like this video, well, why don't you share it with your friends, but also give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.